Uh, hi, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Sinto John. I work for RAK Ceramics as a sales executive. I'm a Christian and a strong believer in Jesus Christ as my God. I am well aware that all Muslims do consider Jesus Christ to a high regard as a prophet. Uh, my question is regarding the uh, issue on prohibition of pork in Islam. My first question is, do you consider all the words of Jesus and the miracles performed by Jesus as mentioned in the Bible? And uh, if so, uh, let me explain to you one thing. The premise in which Christians believe that pork or no food is prohibited is uh, from the gospel when Jesus says that uh, whatever comes into you goes out of you, but what comes from your heart is what, is what makes a man pure or impure. So if you consider that, then why do you think, and if you consider Jesus as a prophet, then why do you say that uh, pork is prohibited in Islam? And if not, what do you think Jesus meant by what, when he said that? Before I answer the question, I'd like to welcome the chairman of the Dubai International Holy Quran Award, Mr. Ibrahim Bumala, and also the deputy chairman, Dr. Saeed, for giving us a wonderful opportunity and making us available to this hall till so late also, mashallah. I'd like to thank him. And I pray to Almighty God that he gives more opportunity for people of Dubai to hear such lectures and so that more and more people get hidayah. And inshallah, inshallah, the thawab of the people accepting Islam will also go to the Dubai International Quran Award. Inshallah. To Dr. Ibrahim Bumala and also to Sheikh Muhammad, inshallah. The brother asked the question that do I believe in the miracles of Jesus Christ mentioned in the Bible? Brother, I believe whatever is mentioned in the Bible. If it matches with the Quran, I believe in it. If it goes against the Quran, I disbelieve in it. If it does not go against, does not match, it is ambiguous. Whatever is matching with the Quran, I believe in it. As far as the second part of the question is concerned, that you say regarding the prohibition of pork, it has been nullified because Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, whatever comes in to you goes out and main thing is from your heart. How does this nullify? You fail to realize that means you are not reading the Bible. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, it says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. Whosoever shall break one jot or tittle from the law, he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That means you cannot break one jot or tittle from the law. That's what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says. Now you pick up another verse and says, what comes into you goes out, what is from your heart, you can have pork. Where does it mean you can have pork? You're contradicting your God, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. It says, think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy but to fulfill. Unless the heavens and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle can pass away from the law until they're fulfilled. And whosoever shall break one law or tittle, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall keep it and teach men the same, they shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So if you want to go to Jannah, you have to be better than the Jews. You have to follow each and every commandment of Moses, peace be upon him. This is the teaching of Jesus Christ. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20. Okay, if that is so, then what do you think he meant when he said that uh, whatever you eat comes in, I mean, whatever comes in out and goes out of you, what is from your heart is what decides what is pure or impure. It is simple. What comes in goes out. What is the problem in that? No, the whatever question, you eat goes out. Is there any problem in that? No, it was asked in relevance when Jesus' disciples were questioned by the Jews that why are they not following the traditional ceremony of washing their hands before eating food. That's when Jesus replied that don't you understand that what you eat doesn't matter if it is pure or impure. What, it, what you eat, it, come, it goes into you and comes he, out of you. He didn't say it doesn't matter what you're eating is pure and impure. That's your thing. It's not mentioned in the Bible that way. No, it is mentioned in the Bible that what you Does eat... Does it say that whether what you're eating is pure or impure doesn't matter? Does it say that? No, it doesn't say. I'm sorry. Ah, okay. So please, please don't put your words in the Bible, please. Fine, fine, fine. But... What I'm quoting is verbatim. Fine. You can check up. I'm quoting from my memory. I don't have the Bible in front of me. But what you're saying, you're putting your words into the Bible. No, but he definitely said that what you eat comes out of you. Of course, what do you eat has to come out. But what, what do you eat has to come out? We are human beings. He wouldn't, he wouldn't simply state that for, I don't know, for it no It is simple. Sake. What you eat comes out simple. Your heart means it is from your heart. That means your heart should follow the commandment. 
no, because Jesus we, Christ, peace be upon him, said earlier, don't break one jot or tittle. So if your heart is in it, you will not break a single jot or tittle. Simple explanation. Fine, you don't you have to be a doctor of divinity. He was trying to prove the Jews wrong by saying that it is not important. No, not that. at all. He wasn't trying to do that. That's what you think. That's what the church tells you. It's plain black and white. No, Jesus no. said you cannot break one jot or tittle from the law. I'm so where is he telling the Jews to break the law of Judaism? He's not telling that. He is not giving any indication for the Jews to break the laws of Judaism. He is telling them to obey. It, it is your understanding of the Bible. But Nowhere he, does the Bible say that. He did think that the Jews were not completely obeying the laws. They Correct. Had. I agree with you. They were not completely obeying because they did not believe in the fulfillment of the Messiah. Because the Jewish scripture says there is a Messiah to come. We Muslims, we believe in it. The Jews don't believe. So he was trying to explain to them, I am the Messiah. But that doesn't mean he was trying to break the laws of the Jews. He was trying to fulfill. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. Simple. I am asking you, do you have pork, brother? I'm sorry? Do you have pork? Yeah, I um, occasionally. That means you're not a good Christian. You aren't a good Christian. Even occasionally you break one law or a title, you shall not go to Jannah. Not Quran says that. Bible says that. Even if you have poke and you break one law or a title, you shall not go to paradise. You shall not enter eternal life. And you said that you are a practicing Christian. You said you believe Jesus Christ is God. I don't believe Jesus is God, but I follow his teachings. I love him more than you. This is what Jesus said. It's from the heart. This is the explanation of your verse. It's from my heart. I love him. I love Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Do you? I don't think so. It is I theoretical, do. not I from do. your heart. Verbally, yes. No, I do very strongly. So if you strongly believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, why are you disobeying him? Why? Why are you disobeying him? I don't, I didn't think, oh, I don't think I am disobeying him until now. But I'm quoting you from the Bible, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not, I have come to destroy okay. the law of the prophets. Okay. And I've given you a quotation from Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 to 8, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 8, Book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5. References. Okay, if that's the case, in the Old Testament it is said that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But what did Jesus Christ say? If somebody slaps you, show him the other side. Now, what is, is, isn't that like a defying of the law? No, it's not defying. I will give you what you're quoting is references from the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 38. Okay. I will give the quotation. I don't, I don't want the quotation. I want the answer for my question. But first I'll give the quotation reference, then I'll give the answer. Na? Fine, fine. I always give with proof. You believe without proof, you can do that. I'm a man of proof. With references. From okay. your scripture. Okay. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 38. It has been said of the old times, that an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, Whosoever takes a shirt, give him the cloak. Whoever walks with you one mile, walk with him twain. Whosoever offers you one cheek, offer him the other. That's it. It doesn't mean that he's going against it. But he's showing it has been said of the old times. But those two laws don't correspond. They are totally different. They're totally against each other. But those things, what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's time to get remedy. People misunderstood. They misunderstood the law. An eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth means there should be justice. That doesn't mean someone by mistake, a child is playing cricket and if the ball hits the eye, that doesn't mean you break his eye. People misunderstood the message. He was correcting it. Same way how you misunderstood the message that Jesus said had folk. Where did he say have folk? It means that people misunderstood. They are following the law by the letter, not by the spirit. What you have to realize that it means that if by mistake someone is playing cricket, and suppose the ball hits the eye, that doesn't mean that you have to take the eye of the boy. So you have to follow the law in the spirit. And you have to see the meaning of it. That's important. That's what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tried to explain. I'm asking the question, will you follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon Lord today? If someone slaps you on one cheek, will you offer the other? There are many people waiting in the queue. Will you do that? I'm sorry? There are many people waiting in the queue. Okay. Will you follow Jesus' law? If someone slaps you, will you offer the other? No, Will, but that is wrong then. According to me, it is wrong. According to you, it is correct, na? You believe Jesus Christ is your God, peace be upon him. Yes. If someone slaps you, will you offer the other sheep? You can come on the stage here. We'll have many people slapping you. I didn't understand, actually. It's the, not clear. That verse of the Bible also says, someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other. Yeah. 
Do you believe in that law? I do, yes. So if someone slaps you, will you offer the other cheek? Exactly. If I don't, that means I'm disobeying his laws. That's okay. it. Okay. Suppose if I tell that from today, everyone will come and hit you on your cheek. Maybe once or twice you'll offer. Will you offer always? Well, uh, that depends on my depth of the faith. I mean, if I'm really strong believer, then I would definitely offer. Is any Christian worth the name born today who will keep on offering his cheek? I have not met anyone. Do you agree that 30,000 people here, 30,000 slaps, will you take? But believe me, there are really true believers who would. I am asking you, will you leave us as a will you? I don't know. That means you're not a believer. That's no, what you realize it is. I don't know Therefore, what we realize that every prophet came and for remedy. Today, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has come. And he said, depending upon the situation, if it is by mistake, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth is wrong. If it is required, sometimes you can offer your cheek, but not always. If always, if you offer the cheek, where is justice? If that way someone kills you, you allow them to kill again? Is this justice? It's not justice at all. Depending upon the situation, you have to keep on changing. Therefore, I say that I believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, which match with the Quran. If it doesn't match with the Quran, what I say, it's an interpolation, it's a concoction, it's a fabrication. Because everything written in the Bible is not the word of God. According to scholars of Christianity, they say there are many interpolations in the Bible. There are many concoctions, there are many fabrications. According to Christian journals, they say there are 50,000 errors in the Bible. How many? 50,000. So therefore, I don't consider Bible to be the word of God. There are many unscientific things mentioned in the Bible. If you read the book of Genesis, you know, I can give a lecture only on it's the okay. contradictions, on unscientific things. I don't consider word of God. Do you consider Bible to be the word of God? Yes. Okay. Now, do you the book of Genesis, chapter number one? Yes. Verse number 16. It says, Almighty God created two lights. The greater light, the sun, to rule the day, the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. Bible says the light of the moon is its own light. Do you believe in that? The light of the moon is? Is its own light. Do you believe in that? No. That we don't believe in the Bible. <laughs> Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 14, Almighty God, He created the earth on the third day, created the sun on the fourth day. That means the earth and vegetables came before and sun came later on. Do you know science, brother? I'm sorry? Do you, do you know science? Yes. The Bible says earth came first and then came sun. Is it correct? I don't know. No. Scientifically, is it correct? Uh, the earth came first and? Then the sun came. Earth came on the third day, sun came on the fourth day. Is it possible? We it know is. the sun is the parent body in the solar system. All the planets that revolve around the sun, they are the bodies from the sun. You know the Big Bang? Yes. So it is created simultaneously. But the Bible says earth on the third day, along with vegetables, sun on the fourth day. How can the vegetables survive without sunlight? Is if, it possible? If, if God can make it that way, why not? But do you believe in that? See, what God can do, but will God do something which is wrong? Illogical thing God will do. See, reasoning with God, I don't, I don't think it is in our scope. It is beyond our scope. It is not in your scope, but in the scope of human beings like me. God has to be logical. You can't be illogical. Then if you say illogical, then you believe every monkey, any stone, any tree is God. But, but what, brother, we... what our brothers in India do? Everything is God for them. And then you say, don't argue with God. Don't reason with God. So then you start worshipping the stone also. Brother, you can't be illogical. Seek it the truth, the truth shall free you. Thank you. So hope you seek the truth, brother. Sure.